is the all new 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz. And we are super stoked because we are some of the first journalists to take this home and test it over a week. So very excited to give you guys this detail. Yeah, and one thing I need to preface this with is we sat in um, a presentation done by Hyundai and the one thing that they want you to take away from this is that this is not a truck. This is not a truck, unless you ask anybody that I ran into over the last week or Google or anyone with eyeballs. But that's what Hyundai wants you to think. So if this isn't what, if this isn't a truck, let's talk about what this is. Yes. Under the hood, we have a four liter 2.5 turbo. Turbo! <laughs> uh, making 281 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque. And the turbo part is important because this is the upgraded motor. You can get a base motor that's a 2.5 NA, but that's no fun. There's no fizz in that. You get the turbo and you actually get a good amount of power, especially when we're talking torque, 300 some pounds foots. 311, yeah, it's quick. Um, it's, it is pretty it's quick. It's not fast, but it, it's it's surprisingly quick. You hear that? Yeah, you we hear, hear that? the brakes. The squeaky brakes. That's not good. Yee. Transmission, so it's the corporate standard eight speed wet um, dual clutch. Dual clutch, yeah. It's nice, it's quick, it's snappy. At lower speeds, it is a little bit clumsy mm -hmm. uh, in low RPMs and like, but like when you really get to like residential street uh, speeds, like 25, 30 miles an hour, and you're in like second to third gear, it is pretty good. It's just not really tuned super well down, down very low. Right. But other than that, you know, it's, it's quick. Yeah, it shifts faster than a lot of like more sporty oriented cars. Dual clutch. I like it a lot. Um, Drivetrain. So it comes standard with an all-wheel drive. I mean, sorry. Blah, blah. It comes standard <laughs> with a front-wheel drive system. We are in the all-wheel drive. H-Track. H-Track. Yep. Yes. Ooh, those brakes are killing me. They're and, real um, squeaky. <laughs> you can lock the center diff so it kind of synthesizes the four-wheel drive experience that you get on um, some of the competitors. Like a uh, truck? Like a truck. But this isn't a truck, though. But don't call this a but truck. don't call this a truck. They want to call this it... I got truck bed, but don't call me a truck. They... Bees on my head, but don't call me a bee head. They want to call... Andy style. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> they want to call it uh, an SAV, a sports Sport. adventure vehicle. And is I, it not sport is activity that... vehicle? I think no, it's it, adventure. I think it is adventure. Is that like a new segmentation? I think it's a new thing. Like, did they just create that one know. day on a I mean, Friday? It's, it's a name. It's a marketing thing. The nice thing about it, the all-wheel drive system is, like, you do have the H-Track system, which is very good, uh, not just for, like, off-roading but also in inclement weather it's full-time all-wheel drive but you do have that locking system so because it is front wheel bias yes this yes, all-wheel drive system absolutely. but locking that helps it yeah it sends equal torque front and back so that, wow, that is really really blue or red anyway suspension i know you have some comments about this because it's not yes. a truck but it's not a truck and it also does for that reason it doesn't get leaf spring suspension mm -hmm. but speed and power look at that yes 6500 RPM redline. You'll love to see it in your not truck. But anyway, um, the suspension on here is pretty good. It's very well refined and sorted for what this thing is being not a truck. Um, you don't get leaf springs, but there's, there's still a bed back there. So you don't have a lot of weight on that rear axle. So on broken pavement, you will get a little bit of chatter from yeah. that rear axle. So if you got puppies in the back, they might throw up. And I do want to mention just the drive modes. Um, so we have normal, smart, sport, and Eco. Snow. Snow, sorry, not yeah. eco. All of the animations for them, or all, like, so you have this digital gauge cluster, right? Which is nice. 10.25 inch screen, it's very nice. There's no hood to it, but we'll get to that when we talk interior. The animations for the drive modes is something that you love, yes, right? Yes, I do. <laughs> and three of the four drive modes have the same design for the gauge cluster. Only yeah. Sport is the only different one. That's okay. It's a little bit of a bummer. You know, like, I would think Snow, like, you could do something fun, but like Frosty rolling across the dash, I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay, so ride overall feel, what are your thoughts, interpretations? Yeah, I mean, we kind of talked about this with the suspension, like, it's well damped, it's very comfortable, it's not a truck, it's not an SUV, so it rides a little bit less refined than something like a sister vehicle, like a Tucson, but it also is more refined than something like a Tacoma or New Frontier that we just tested, uh, so it's nice, you know, like, I, the worst thing is, like, you do get a little bit of chatter on some of those, like, really bumpy pavement, but on normal broken pavement, city driving, it's very comfortable. Now, it has a bed, so I feel obligated to talk about um, some truck stuff. Truck stuff, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so towing, it maxes out at 5,000 pounds, which is really impressive, considering really that that's good. more than his 4Runner. That's the same as my 4Runner. Sorry, runner. same as his 4Runner. More than your Jeep. More than my Jeep. Yes. Um, coming from this little thing. I mean, it's yes. quite impressive. The payload. The power, this is how you get the towing capacity. Payload is just short of 1,800 pounds. 
Which is, yeah, the actual figure is, I forget what it is right now. 1748. 1748. Is that really what it is? <laughs> yeah, 17. Dude, what happened to Fetty Wap? Well, that, that's Did he 17. Lose his other eye? Everybody want to be Fetty Wap. Nobody want to lose an eyeball. Wasn't that 17? I think it's 38, you're right. Yeah, 38. The important thing, though, is that 1748 is more than... Uh, the Tacoma which is a benchmark which is the benchmark and it's more than the Frontier which is brand new mm -hmm. uh, so that's impressive. actually super impressive the, the less impressive part of that coin is it's only a four foot bed so yeah. like I don't know how you're getting that much weight in a four foot bed but yeah so the lowest one in the Tacoma is a five foot typically most mid-sized trucks have a five foot bed this only has a four foot bed but one thing that they want to make sure that you know and I, apparently it's an inter industry standard it it's is. something that I learned over the week it but is. you can still foot uh, still fit a 4x8 piece of plywood in the back. You absolutely can um, foot a 4x8 piece of plywood. There is... What? Did I say something? You said foot. Um, but what yeah. did I say wrong? You said you can foot. Oh, <laughs> you can fit, sorry. So it, it doesn't lay... It lays at an interesting angle. So the truck tailgate is at 45 degrees, and then it kind of like... There's a little... Um, I guess yeah, compartments for the wheel for wells are, the wheel are flat wells. on top. Yeah. So it rests on top of that, and then the trunk or the tailgate comes up to kind of meet it. Mm -hmm. So you do still have to bungee cord it in, obviously, because right. you don't have an eight foot bed. Right. Um, but you can do it. So that's pretty cool. Now, some other cool features about the bed: you have your typical like tie dot tie down points and like your rail points, but you also have um, like these hidden cubbies on either side, which is pretty cool. One of them also has. Um, an electrical outlet in there. It's only yes. 115 volts though, so Matt has a quick story about that. Yeah, that was well, that was one of the things I was really excited to test. So um, we were without power for like almost three days at my house. So when Hyundai sent this car back with me, I was super excited to test the inverter in the back, the 115 volt. I ran 100 feet of extension cord down to my basement to my sump pump because I had no power and I had no generator. And it was five volts short. Standard house outlet is 120 volts, so I was just five volts short, which so was a close. bit of a bummer. Yeah. Um, another cool thing is on the underfloor of the truck bed, you have another compartment that's a, that's it's actually quite a quite a good size, yes. and you can actually use that as a cooler, which is awesome. And it also has a drain port underneath there. Yeah. But uh, a lot of manufacturers are like starting to do that now. We had the, yeah, the Mach-E Mach -E had it. Had that. Um, do you see the Mach-E like press photo of of like showing the cooler? No. It's this woman who's just like she's posing like over the hood just by like an excessive amount of shrimp. <laughs> it's so funny. I'll, I'll flash it on the screen That's here because hilarious. it's actually like amazing. Uh, one of the things that I actually really like about the bed uh, is that you get a standard tonneau cover. Uh, it supports like 220 pounds uh, of man. So I stepped on or there. Or woman. Uh, or, or woman. Yeah, sure. Whoever wants to get up there. But it supports that way. It locks. So that's a, kind of a first to be uh, having lockable tonneau cover built in from the factory. So that's super cool to have. Yeah, and as you just mentioned right there, it is from the factory. And I think that is a huge selling point for them. I think people buy SU, or some people that generally buy SUVs might not look at a small truck or small uh, not SAV. Truck. Small yeah, not truck. We don't know um, this, because not the truck. bed is typically not secure and trying to find yeah. a cover is also you know daunting for some people and they're also very expensive so the yeah, fact that like hyundai they took that whole thought away from you that whole process is like i think so awesome on their part yeah. and they picked a really works. good brand um it it works really well super it's super easy to use it's super, got that yeah, little yeah, handle functional. so you can pull it back it's only it's four strong, feet so it's, it's safe. just real yeah. easy so that was that was great but let's talk exteriors about this thing oh so, boy um they have a bunch of colors. I guess the one thing we'll say about that is like they're all really earthy. Right? <laughs> Except for this this I don't know, skim milk white yeah. one that we have right it's now. It's like an off-white. It's it's nice. I mean it doesn't have like a lot of dimension. Like the Hyundai Santa Fe calligraphy that we were just in had probably one of the coolest whites that I've seen. And this is like it's white. The, the funny thing is, is like they had a baby blue and I was like, wow, I really don't like that. And Matt thought it looked good. I was like, <gasps> yeah. And starting with the front, I think the first impression you get is that it looks very similar to a Tucson. Um, the daytime running lights are like built into the grill. They're integrated and it's like a similar design pattern to the Tucson as well. Yeah, it's um, a little bit more butched up. Yeah, it has, <laughs> I hate that word. <laughs> it has less lights. 
Um, but that so that's integrated to the grill, and then like your actual projectors are in a separate housing below that. And then around the side, you have the upgraded, the top of the top, the 20 inch wheels. So if you want something that's a little bit more off-road focused, maybe get a lower trim and get a smaller diameter wheel for a little bit more sidewall and a more flex. Um, but the thing that I want to talk about with the profile is this is like a shape we've never seen before. And that was very apparent when I took this thing up to like my cabin for the weekend. It's like in middle Wisconsin. Um, the looks that I got while driving this thing was insane. Like we drive a lot of cars here and a lot of like very fancy and like very impressive cars and nothing has even come close to getting this many looks. Like I pulled this thing up to like a local pizza place while I was up there. There were two C8s in the parking lot, one F-Type convertible and also in a Mercedes AMG GT. And this got far more looks and I'm not joking than any of those. Yeah, well, all of those combined. I, I think it's the design, but it's also just the fact that like it's new. Yes, um, it's brand new. But and it's, it's like also a totally yeah, new the design, shape. The design's great. Yeah, and like you drive past and people like they're like, oh, Tucson's coming, and then you get to about here and they're like, oh, what the hell is that? And just next snap. Yeah, th it's amazing. That's the thing is, it looks similar to a Tucson, but they don't share any body panels. But the the front of you can definitely see that they they. It was inspired, the front of the car was definitely inspired by the Tucson. Right, yeah, and, and again, we talk about how this isn't a truck, but like, I would go to the grocery store and I pull up and this, you know, people are coming up to me like, hey, that's a cool truck, like, what is that? Mm -hmm. Like, well, first yeah, of all, it's not a truck, a truck. It's sir. A, sir, it's a SAV. <laughs> sir, I'm gonna have to ask you to, to step down. Just, okay. Just calm yourself down. Let's talk about. The, hold on, we talk about the, the taillights quick? That's what I was about to say. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> so literally about to say I'm taillights. sorry. <laughs> um, so they make it H, oh, which is cool, and then they have yes. like LED in the actual tailgate, which most trucks don't have. Yeah, and they also go into the tailgate, which yeah. I don't know if you just said that or not. I did but just say that, um, sorry. <laughs> uh, another cool thing I like is that they um, stamped Santa Cruz into the tailgate. It's something that like you know Toyota does with the Tundras. A lot of other manufacturers do it, but I just think that. Um, it's a it's a great feature as opposed to just putting. They're about that life. Yeah, they're no. about the Santa Cruz life. They like don't want it. you to forget. Uh, Matt wants Pretty to mention cool. the Easter eggs because he just like yes. loves Easter eggs. For yes, some it's cool. I mean, what, you own a Jeep and you tell me you don't like Easter eggs. I mean, like so. Okay. Yes. So the the shape, like we just said, is totally unique. It's brand new, and they've reflected that by giving you little like cartoonified like profile shapes around each wheel well at the top on each side of your bed. Uh, wall and then also your like tailgate step right below your license plate. It's just like kind of cool and kind of adds a little personality. And just real quick, I forgot to mention this when we were talking about um, the truck bed, but there's a lot of footholes for lack of a better footholes <laughs> for lack of a better term. There's a few on the outside and there's also one like right dead in the right dead center. Yeah. Um, so that's like great that they did that as well. Yeah, they're all big enough for like a work boot, like a steel toe, yeah. which is super nice. Let's jump into the interior. And again, it's very Tucson in here, but yes. that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think that um, the nice. Tucson was styled very nicely and um, this is similar I think yeah so. absolutely you get the nice kind of cutouts that go along your dash and then you've got the hoodless thing over your info for your gauge cluster which I really like the digital dash is Tucson the steering wheel is Tucson infotainment system is Tucson mm -hmm. the one thing that is different is the um, gear selector and this yeah. is pretty ergonomic like it's nice to rest your hand on it there it's right in my hand yeah I don't do you drive like I haven't really actually I don't seen drive you drive like, like, like that I do though I mean we have the Miata this week so I'm driving like this but like not in here right I think they did try and like spice things up a little bit. You have this like canvas material. Yeah, I um, which like the, that. I don't, the, the Tucson didn't have this. Yeah. And you have like some accent orange in here. Yeah. Oh uh, well, yeah, you got the mesh in the, the, in the seat, seat too, oh, which is kind of cool. Eyes on the road, please. I'm sorry. The sorry. Hyundai um, uh, Autopilot isn't on. Uh, <laughs> I could turn it on real quick. <laughs> you also get um, this like... I don't know, it's like plastic kind of accent yeah, piece. Yeah, it's plastic, it's but it's, nice. it's, it's a nice little it's accent nice. piece, It I comes think. together for a little bit more personality than just like a black hole into it. Exactly. Um, space, I think, and comfort, the seats are comfortable. I really like them, yeah. There's really good space up here for both of us. I mean, not constricted at all with headroom or legroom. No, my um, favorite part about the seats and just like the overall general comfort up front here is I have cooled seats. Yeah, They're you, quickly so have, becoming like my favorite thing. Yep, you have cooled seats, heated seats, and a heated steering wheel, which is nice. Yes. I do want to mention the back seats are a little bit more cramped, not from a headroom perspective, mm -hmm. but from a knees perspective. So we're Absolutely. both over six feet and um, it's definitely manageable, but there's a, there's there's a lot less room back there than in your Tucson for sure. 
It's actually quite funny. One thing that we both agreed upon when we got in this car is that it needed a panel roof. So you just is had like funny? your. Is it, is it quite funny? Well, I thought it was quite funny that we <laughs> no, were both it is like. Funny. It is funny. Literally within yes. a minute, I think we both were like, this needs a panel. There's a lot of stuff that we disagree on. And yeah, it is funny that this is um, like just, immediately without hesitation. Your this standard. Is we totally agree on. Yeah, your standard sunroof. I think that's because we just came out of the Mach E, and that has a gorgeous yes, uh, sunroof. Yes, the whole thing. Or yeah, I mean. Roof. It, without that, like, you still get air vents back there, you still get chargers back there, but, like, if you don't have the panel roof, which obviously you don't, it just kind of turns into, like, a black hole back there. Yep, it's all black agreed. interior, it's dark, it's cramped, and it's just, it'd be nicer to have. Okay, talking about technology now. Technology. Uh, Apple, a Apple CarPlay that you have, Android Auto, Wired. It's wired, yes. Um, sounds pretty good, sounds pretty natural. All usual Hyundai stuff that we've covered in other videos, it's basically like the similar in in entertainment system as a Tucson. The one thing um, that is a pain with this infotainment system is that it's all touch. There's no knobs or buttons. And I think that it's just not, it's not easy to use when you're trying to control the, the volume um, yeah, the volume is really the only issue that I have. Well, and I mean climate control. I think that you need buttons and knobs control. for that. I haven't had an issue with the climate control. It's mostly just been the volume. Yeah, I mean that that is a big one though. But yeah, I know what you mean, and I think a lot of people share that uh, that opinion with you. I, yeah, I think if you had a volume knob, people wouldn't really focus on it too much. No, but. and I mean you do have stuff on your steering wheel to control all that stuff. Yeah, but so. when it's a passenger and bla piano black. Who? Well, then kill your passenger. Yeah, that's wow. true. The, I will say the, pas the the piano black isn't as offensive in this as even something like an Audi. Like I have been playing around with this thing for the I last mean, I five, seven fingers. days. Unless my fingers are just like really sweaty, well, you just had to palms play. sweaty, knees weak. All right, mom, spaghetti. Safety. Yes. Lead okay. It, take it. Take so it away. So this is my favorite thing, and I love talking about this. I actually go really they in depth. Pop off. <laughs> I go really in depth on a. Uh, Sonata versus Accord video that we did last year. And it basically comes down to this. You, no car is autopilot, no car drives itself. Don't like, don't fall victim to the marketing of Tesla. Tesla has the best system. I would say that this highway driving assist is of not a, necessarily a close second, but second. Like it works incredibly well. The adaptive cruise, the lane centering. Um, it takes some pretty aggressive turns on the highway, like at speed. It's fantastic. The Ford Bronco Sport was pretty good too, but I would agree. Yeah, the Ford better. system is getting there. Um, Nissan has a decent one. Cadillac has a decent one, but I really like this one. So yeah, that's a huge selling point to me for this car. That and the cooled seat. And a lot of the I'm a, a lot of the safety features are standard, which is which is that's great. that's very true. Yes. Um, so let's talk about price, competitors, and yes. what we would pick. So base price starts at just under twenty five thousand. Actually, sorry, just over twenty five thousand dollars. Okay. And we are in the limited trim, which limited. is the the top of the line, and that is just under forty one thousand dollars. Yeah. Which gets to be a lot of money. Yeah. Um, so the Maverick, I think each each trim level, you said how much is about three to five thousand dollars more. Yeah, this the Maverick. Is. The Maverick's really the only true competitor. I mean, this isn't really competing against. Like, this isn't displacing people that are going to go and buy a Rav Four or a CX Five well, or something they, like they that. They would argue it is. I mean, I know they would argue, but like they're also saying that this isn't a truck, and everyone thinks this is a truck. So I don't think that a Rav Four buyer is going to buy this. Is that right or wrong? I don't know. That's their call. But I also know that this isn't really competing against things like a Tacoma or a Frontier. So it's kind of inventing its own segment where the Maverick is also there and the Maverick is actually several grand cheaper, like spec for spec, or I should say trim for trim, but you get a lot less. So yeah. you get less technology, you get less safety, you get less power. Less um, towing capacity. I think, I think towing or payload is actually more, but the Maverick like comes in hybrid. So the fuel economy MPG's is way better. better. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Well, I, the, I, I'm going to argue with you here or okay, disagree with it. you here because I think that this could deter someone buying a RAV4. If you're hauling plants and mulch and things, flowers that are like dirty, you could just quickly spray this out. Who's versus doing that in their RAV4? A lot of people move plants and things like that in, in their in their yes. SUVs. Why wouldn't you? Use okay, them? let's make it a very real conversation then. Uh, your girlfriend drives a Rav Four. Yeah. My wife drives a CX Five. My wife doesn't like this. Would Kate? Would Would your no. girlfriend? I but like I this? think it's different. I think we don't adventure enough. 
You have a Wrangler. We, we don't adventure. I still would we, argue. We've like, camped together. I agree, but how many times have we gone? I think if like you're an avid camper and you're mountain biking every single sure every single weekend, like you you can fit two mountain bikes in this, and then you can go you parallel can. park Monday through Friday at your you corporate can, job you can in fit the city. Three mountain bikes in here, if you yeah. Want so to. I think like that's the selling point, at least that I could see, is that you sure. can't fit three mountain bikes in a Rav Four. <laughs> You, I guess if you had a bike rack, obviously you could. But yeah. I think I, all I'm trying to say is I think that it will it will take some market share away from an SUV. That's sure. all I'm trying to say. I think the thing that sells me on this thing is that it's so weird. And having done downshift for like three years or you however like long cars. we've done it now, like sure the new Ferrari's here. I don't care. Lamborghini's got a Countach. Okay, that's I know I'm cynical about that. I like weird stuff. Like yeah. the fact that this is like the way that it looks. Um, the, the towing is super impressive. The interior amenities are super impressive. The technology is very good. Um, I like pretty much everything about this. And I love the fact that it's weird. I love the fact that it's got a bed, it's unibody. It's like not like the, the Maverick is a competitor, but it looks like a truck. Yeah, well, This doesn't look like it. And truck. if we're just gonna talk about looks for a second, this looks so much better than a Maverick. I so urge you right now, better. Google what a Maverick looks like because it's freaking ugly. It looks like a Nissan Cube with a truck bed. <laughs> yeah, I think for that reason, like I would lean this way. I would uh, lean this way. We haven't tested the Maverick. We'll talk to Ford about getting one and then we can do a real true comparison. But based on paper and like all the technology and the amenities and everything that you get with this and the looks and the weirdness, I'm going with this. Yeah, I like 100%. Like, I'm, I'm with you on it. Anything else? I think that's about it. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. We really appreciate it. Leave a like and a comment. What would you rather get, this or a Maverick or something else? Also, we're curious if you are a, um, an SUV owner right now, and would you consider getting one of these, an SAV? Let yeah. us know. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.